Hi guys, namaste and I hope all of you are doing great. We are starting a new series for K2 in all these 12 houses in the amazing five amazing things for K2. Okay, so it's going to be the same format. I'm going to talk to you about the K2 and I'm going to talk to you about the house and then the synergy that comes together. Okay, so let's talk about the first house now. now K2 is a graha of self-analysis, self-discovery, trying to, trying to understand how and why things are, it's nature of things and it's correlation with you. Okay, when you, when you do something, why are you doing it? You know, why does this thing happen to you? It's contemplative. It's, um, it likes to do assessments, okay, K2. Um, the first house is your, you know, who you are, your individual, your in, I'm sorry, your individuality, right? Uh, things which, you, uh, which is core to you, your talents, your intrinsic nature. When you go out, let's say, to work or out anywhere, right, probably buying groceries or whatnot, you put on a new... A sheath, a covering, a veil, and you see things differently because you, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to have social acceptance, social obligation, and whatnot, right? You're a different person, but you yourself in a room alone, that is a different thing altogether, isn't it? That is who you are, right? So that's what the first house is all about. So, what happens when you have K2 and the first house come together? Now, it is a powerful synergy, it's beyond astrology actually. Um, it it is um, spirituality if you if you think about it K two and the first house because you are analyzing you are um, assessing who you are on a deeper level on a real deep level so it is spiritual in nature. Well, anyway, oh fun fact I have K two in the first house. So, anyways, let's let's get started here. Let's talk about the top five amazing things. Number one is these people are, as I say, spiritual in nature. They see everything in a spiritual eye. They um, they try to they're philosophical in many ways, right? Whenever they see something, say if a, if a kid um, is uh, is playing playing something, right? Playing and talking to himself and just playing, and just a three year old toddler doing that. Uh, and, it, and the person looking at it, and the person who has a strong K2 in the first house, will go into a philosophical reference, right? It's just not looking at the child playing, but then goes into a deeper understanding and why the child is talking to himself and, you know, what's going on in the child's mind and how is that relating to him and the connection with the nature and everything. You know, they are very contemplative, very spiritual in, the, in, in anything they do, okay? Now, I think it's a great quality to have because, because you can live in a more vibrant life. Life will become very exciting. It will not be a boring thing. Right? I mean, even when you're driving, you see things and you contemplate. You try to understand why things are happening. And through that discovery, it gets exciting. Life will become more colorful. You really come to think about it. Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two is coping mechanism. Now, this is a, uh, a thing that I see in almost all the charts who have a powerful K2 in the first house. They are very resourceful. When a problem happens, okay, when any problem happens, the first thing that comes to the uh, to to earth is a stream of emotions, right? Uh, a, like sadness or grief or anxiety, uh, anguish, sorrow, whatever, right? Those are the things that first comes to us when there's a problem happening. Right now, only after some time, we then move into okay, what can we do next? Let's be practical about it. Uh, what are the you know resources that we have? You know, how are we going to cope with the problem? Right, but sometimes, or at least from what I can see, most of the time, as people they dwell in these emotions first, they go, they, they, they go into a deeper level and they take a longer time to come out from it. Right, and, and that convalescence, emotional convalescence, will have the problems multiplied many, many times. But this K two, the first people, they they accept. Of course, we all are humans. You know, emotions is part of our nature, but it acknowledges it. Okay, this is what's going on. I'm feeling a little bit unhappy now. Okay, blah blah blah. But what do I do next? Okay. How do I cope myself with this? That is what K2 in the first will start to move on, that direction, okay? Um, now, that's the first. And the second, 
And the third is these people are very health conscious, it goes without saying. They see their body not for just for sustenance or to, to as a being, but then the body is a host for your soul. Okay, it's analogous to the temple and, and the divine uh, deity, right? It, it is like that. They do not see their body just as a means of sustenance, but they but it is a something which is in a sanctity, a state of sanctity, right? So they don't overly indulge, they don't uh, ruin themselves with alcohol, cigarette, drugs, whatnot, not even tattoos, right? They they don't they don't believe in all that. Okay, they, they believe that the body is must be in a sanctified state because it's hosting the soul within. Okay, it is a it is an interesting which I've seen uh, in some of my clients who have K2 well positioned at first house. All right, so that's the third one. Uh, so the first was spiritual. So the second was coping mechanism. And the third is about health. The fourth is they do not rush into things. Okay, they don't do a swag job. They are meticulous. They are methodical. They assess things. They, they make sure that their job is planned and executed perfectly, no matter what they do. Such a great thing to have. Okay, and the last but certainly not the least is their quality of appreciating what's going on around them. Okay, they 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 assess the situation, you know, their surroundings, and and they they convert that into gratefulness and and um, and, and a way to find uh, rather they strike a balance between what's going on around them, right? and um, how to convert that into a positive uh, feeling. Okay, I'm trying to get an example here. Say if you bought a car, okay, and you, you, this is a dream car, you always wanted to drive this car since you were young, and you bought it, okay, you're enjoying it, and you know, the, the, the pleasure of driving, and, and all that, that, that's going on. But for some reason, you lost your job and the, uh, and the bank repossessed it and the car is gone now. So you're waiting at the bus stop and you see someone else driving your car now. Uh, and so at that point of time, at that moment, your perspective would be different. Now, when you're driving your car, that's a different thing. The only thing that mattered was, you know, you know the enjoyment, the sheer pleasure of driving it. But now it's a different thing. Okay, you're looking at it from the window of the bus okay so everything comes alive okay the, the 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 person who's sitting beside you the commute that you're going uh the the smell the the lights the colors whatnot everything comes you know this vibrant emotions this 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 fountain of things which is popping out here and there comes into perspective and you won't get that unless you're in in that situation correct only when you lose something then you realize how precious that thing was. So these people, uh, they accept that, that you know, there's a possibility that they might lose things. It is not, it is not being pessimistic. This is not, they are, you know, they are not confident or anything like that. But they accept the fact that things are not, uh, you know, fixed, right? So they accept that. And they, they relate things in such a way. They communicate to people in such a way. They, they engage, you know, in things in such a way. Okay, they always have this thing that okay, this thing may not last too. Okay, uh, and and as such, they create this sense of um, strength, you know, emotional strength within them. They're very strong within because the way they look at things is in a different uh, perspective. The perspective is this state may change. Okay, at any time. And as such, I would I, I would like to be grateful now. Thank you for, to you know. So in any situation, they're very grateful. They're very thankful to God. All right. So, so such a great thing to have. Hold on, I'm trying to think of other examples here. Well, guys, basically, it's like that. It's basically that you are very thankful for what you have. If you wake up in the morning, if you don't have any pain in your body, if your loved ones are, I mean, they're still alive. That's it. You're very happy with you with the day, right? It's, they just need a small thing, just a small condition to make their life, to make their day happy. 
right so that's such a great thing but for many of us we need a lot of things right to to be happy even if if you have a lot of things still you don't find that happiness so ketu in the in the first have this wonderful thing of creating happiness from the tiniest the smallest things okay so those are the top five amazing things when you have ketu in the first i hope this has been uh, um, beneficial uh, educational uh, and uh, probably even entertaining uh, if it's so i would like to hear it from you please leave your comments down below and i will be coming up with the k2 in the second very soon please stay tuned thank you namaste